thank you so much for joining us once again for this online service. So remember, we come to you every Sunday for our own our online service. We also have our onset service. We will be back and we want to welcome each and every one of us listening from home. Uh, wherever the place you are in, may God bless you even as you join us and as even as uh, sing this song that is singing in my heart. I will enter his gates with a singing in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. And that is in Psalms 100 verse 4. Uh, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Again, I read uh, that is in Psalms 100 verse 4. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his, uh, his name. Glory be to Jesus. I thank God because he's calling unto us to enter his gates with praise to enter his courts uh, to enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts and to enter his courts with praise glory be to jesus let us enter his gates with thanksgiving in our heart and always remember to thank god for what uh, what he has done uh, for you this week uh, the week that has been what, how he has taken care of you how he has protected you how he has taken through uh, taken you through different challenges maybe let us enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts let us enter his courts with Praise, glory be to Jesus. As we prepare to listen from uh, the word of God today, let us let it be your desire. Let it be my desire that I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and that I will enter his courts with praise. Whatever God will minister to me today, if it will uh, come as a, 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 an encouraging word or to rebuke me or to correct me, I will accept it with thanksgiving in my heart. How I wish that it can be your desire also, in Jesus' name. And before we welcome the word of God, I want us to believe and pray. Dear Lord, thank you for such a wonderful day as this, a bright day, Jehovah Lord, that we are call, uh, you're calling unto us that we may rejoice in you, that we may be glad and enter your gates with thanksgiving and enter your courts with praise. Jehovah, we are entering your courts this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts, with the praise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you for the word that is coming, dear Lord, my Father. May it uh, come to us, Jehovah Lord. May it teach us, may it rebuke us, may it correct us, Jehovah Lord, and we'll follow your ways, Jehovah, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for the listener, Jehovah Lord. May you create in him or her a heart that is humble to listen from thee and be humble, Jehovah God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We give you praise and we give you glory and it is in Jesus' mighty name we pray and give thanks. Amen and amen. Good morning and welcome once again to this broadcast. It has been a pleasure to come to your homes, uh, to come to your gadgets, wherever you are. Uh, uh, thank you so much for being part of this broadcast. I would like to encourage you that if you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, please do so. Don't, don't uh, finish this series without subscribing. Uh, it is important to us so that when we upload something, you will be notified and you will not be passed by. <coughs> We have been going through a, 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 a series uh, called uh, Embrace, Embrace the Process, Accept the Process, uh, 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 Accept uh, um, uh, to be trained by God because we all love blessings. We all love to be blessed. We all love victories. But we may, we, we, we always tend to shy away from the process that is required for us to have the capacity to handle these victories and to handle these blessings. Once again, I'm your pastor, Pastor David Kitui from Christ Fellowship Chapel. Our church is located in Kabarak. Uh, uh, Kabarak is located uh, from Nakuru 
when you're going towards Cambia Moto, you get to the main campus, the main campus of Kabarak University, just around 500 meters from the main campus heading towards Cambia Moto. On your right hand side, you will find our church there. We will embrace you. We will love to fellowship with you. Kindly join us. Uh, we will embrace you. Let us continue with the, with the third part of this series. We read from the book of Psalms, chapter 37, verses 23, from the Amplified Version, and, and, and the Bible says that the steps of a good and righteous man are directed and established by the Lord. And we went ahead to underline the word steps, good and righteous, directed and established. And he delights in his way and blesses his paths. The King James Version says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And we underline the word ordered, and he delighteth in his way. Then we defined a few words from that scripture. The first word that we defined is steps, steps, which comes from the Hebrew word mitzod, mitzod. It means going or to step or to advance to advance, going to step to advance. So it is basically a process that elevates. It is a process that we take that elevates. So we also uh, uh, define the words directed, ordered, or established. And these come from the, he from the Hebrew word kun, K-O-O-N, kun, meaning to set up or to prepare, to set up or to prepare. Then righteousness is simply being right with God. So our scripture simply says that if we go back to our scripture, that the process that will elevate us, the process that will elevate us of someone who is right with God are prepared by God. They are prepared by God. That is my interpretation of that scripture. So as an introduction, we did this uh, uh, from our previous episodes and we said that this means that God will give or order for us a process instead, instead of a blessing or victory. Instead of a blessing or victory. It means that God will order a process. He will order a process. He will order steps. He will give us a process instead of the victories and blessings. And why? Why is it so? God has already prepared. He has already prepared what we need and want. What is remaining is your preparation for the blessing. How do I know that? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9. But as it is written, Paul is telling the Corinthians, I has not seen nor ear had nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. We underlined the words God has prepared. The phrase God has already prepared. The blessings and the victories that we so, so desperately want have already been prepared. They are installed in God's kingdom. And that's why God is not going to order that blessing. Because he has already done it. He's not going to order that victory. He, already, he is already victorious. He's going to order a process that will expand your capacity to be able to handle this victory and these blessings. I would like to also to propose as an introduction that you know that you have grown spiritually. You know that you have grown spiritually when your prayer changes from give me to take me. When your prayer changes from give me to take me, that's an indication that you have matured spiritually. How do I know? I know it from the, from the story of the prodigal son. We find it in Luke chapter 15 verses 11 onwards up to 32. The son thought that he is mature enough and went to his father and asked for an inheritance. And when he was given the inheritance, he went and wasted it away to a point that he was eating with the swine. He had to come back to his father. When he came back, he said something very profound. 
he said that father make me as one of your servants make me the process that he went through made him to change his prayer from give me to make me and that's why i'm proposing that you will know that you have matured spiritually when your prayer changes from give me to make me we also saw that righteousness is the scepter to god's kingdom righteousness is the scepter to god's kingdom i'm going to explain that in a little bit how do i know i know it from hebrews chapter 1 verses 7 to 8 and the bible says and of the angels he says he who makes his angels spirits in some other versions it says wind he makes his angels wind and his ministers a flame of fire but to the sun to the sun he says your throne underline that your throne oh god your throne is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your king Your throne oh God is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. The writer of Hebrew says that for you to get to the kingdom of God you need a scepter of righteousness. The word scepter actually means authority and access authority and access i know this from the story of esther chapter 8 verses 4 where esther wanted to see the king the only indication that showed that he is accepted she is accepted and has authority to be at the presence of the king is by the king lowering his scepter so this means that the scepter of righteousness is the authority that we need and it is the access that we need to get into God's kingdom and have access into those victories and blessings that he has in store for us another point that we put across is that righteousness is a gift from God through faith very important it is a gift from God through faith through faith we get salvation but now this salvation through faith will will make us have access to this gift from god which is righteousness paul tells the philippians in philippians chapter 3 verses 9 and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law but that which is from faith in christ from faith when you accepted christ the saving faith when you accepted Christ the righteousness which is from God by faith the righteousness which is from God by faith and we continue to see that the acts of righteousness that Jesus commands us to practice are actually God's training program on management the acts of righteousness that God Jesus commands us in Matthew chapter 6 to practice they are actually a training program which was his first words and instruction to man his first words and instructions to man let us see those words in genesis chapter 1 verse 28 after god has created man the first thing he said be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it have dominion those are the words the first words that god gave man after he created them be fruitful multiply it's very possible be fruitful multiply fill the earth very possible subdue it underline subdue have dominion we all want to be fruitful we all dream about being fruitful we all fight to multiply survival for the fittest is a principle upon this fighting to multiply We all want to fill the earth. We want to influence everyone on this planet. We want to be heard. We want our voice to fill the earth. We all want to have dominion. 
Last week we saw that even politicians can kill to have dominion. We all want this. But the question that I'm posing to you today, are you willing to cultivate? Are you willing to subdue? And I would like to suggest that we will become fruitful. We will multiply what we have. And we will have dominion if we only allow God's training program on management to take effect in our lives. If we allow God's training program on management, then we will have all those things that we are dreaming to have. Let's go now to the third kind of training that God wants us to go through. And, that, and this is what I would like to call self-management. We saw the first one. The first one we saw was financial management. The second one we saw was time management. And now the, the third one that we are seeing right now is self-management. Managing yourself. Self-management. In other words, self-discipline. In other words, self-control. So the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 to 18, that when you fast, it means that Christ expects us to fast. He hasn't said if you fast. So there is no option about it. There is no plan B, plan A. It is when you fast. Do not look somber as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put on your head, put oil on your head and wash your face. So that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will surely reward you. I would like to suggest that fasting is a, is a third act of righteousness. It is the third act of righteousness. This is, this is a training program for self-discipline. It is actually a training program for self-discipline. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 to 27 from the, easy, easy, uh, from the English Standard Version, the Bible says that, uh, 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 this is Paul talking to the Corinthians, that do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize. Only one receives a prize. We are all running. Everyone in this world is competing, but only one receives a prize. So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. If you want to complete and get a prize, if you want to get this scepter of righteousness, you must practice self-control, self-management. They do it to receive a perishable wrath, but we are imperishable. Actually, in other versions, it says a perishable crown. But we are running for an imperishable crown. Somewhere in the Bible says that the blessings of God, the blessings of God are, 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 without, uh, are without sorrow. They are without sorrow. They are imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not, I, I do it under control. I do it under control. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline in my body. I discipline myself. I discipline my body and keep it under control. And I keep it under control. Lest, after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. I myself should be disqualified. From that scripture, we learn that there is a reward in self-control. There is a reward in self-control. Self-control causes us to master our passions. Causes us to master our passions. And, 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 and actually, it causes us to master our excesses so that we can, we can limit them. And this, this improves our relationship with our fellow men and also with God. If we master our excesses, if we master, if 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 we are we are we are we are we are prone to anger, 
if we are prone to anger, if you learn to fast and ask God to give you the grace to fast, you will master that excess of getting angry quickly. If we have a loud mouth and a loose tongue, if you practice fasting, you can always know someone who is, who, who is, uh, you can know them by their fruits. Someone who fasts and someone who doesn't fast. If someone has a loose tongue, it means that they are not fasting. Because when you fast, it helps you to have self-control, to have self-management. And this will improve your relationship with people and also with God. This will improve your relationship with people and also with God. There exists a correlation between covenants and self-discipline. This is something that I came to learn. That there, there exists a correlation between self-control and covenants. And mind you that God is very strict on covenants. Every covenant that you make here on earth, he obeys it in heaven. Every covenant that you make it with him, he also obeys it. So there exists a correlation. And I want us to see the kind of correlation that, that exists between self-control and, 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 and covenants. And actually, covenants may decide our destiny. It may decide whether we will land in destruction or not. Let us turn our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. And I'm going to read from the New King James Version. This is a very interesting story of Abraham when he was being blessed. The Bible says that now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will, I will curse those who curse you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Basically, God is tying himself and telling Abraham, if you do this, I'm getting myself into a covenant that you will be fruitful. You will multiply. You will fill the earth and you will have dominion over the earth. Let's jump to Genesis chapter 25, verses 32 to 34, from the New King James Version. And now we see that we have someone called Esau, who, who is, uh, uh, I think, two generations younger than uh, his grandfather Abraham. His grandfather Abraham. So Esau goes and, 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 and tells uh, uh, Jacob. And Esau said, look, I am about to, uh, to die. So what is this birthright to me? So Esau despised his birthright. This covenant that God gave Abraham was supposed to be passed down to him. But the guy despised it. Then Jacob said, Swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. For what? What did he sell it to? And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Not even meat. Not even meat. Then he ate and drank, arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Esau could not fast. He could not master his excesses of hunger. I hope my Western brothers are listening to this. He could not manage himself. He could not manage his, his appetite. And that caused him to throw away a covenant that he made with God. That his family made with God. What do we learn from this? What do we learn from this? Fasting trains us in self-management by keeping covenants. A good example is sex. Sex before marriage or sex outside marriage. That is an action that goes against covenants. The covenant that you made with your wife. The covenant that you've made with God. 
that the covenant that you are about to do when you get married. Sex is something that has been preserved within a covenant of marriage. If you do it outside the covenant of marriage, then it means that you will not be able to hold any other covenant. And this curse will follow you. But it is only through fasting that we will be able to manage our excesses, our desires of the flesh. Self-management. Covenants are respected even in heaven. Covenants are respected even in heaven. They may become the deciding factor. They may become the deciding factor whether we get to our destiny or not. Many people are destroying their destinies because of sex outside marriage or sex before marriage. This is an act that has been preserved for covenants. Because covenants are respected even by God. When you get outside this covenant, if you go to the altar and say that I will cling to only you, and then you start telling us that the government of Kenya has allowed polygamy, what are you saying? Respect covenants by self-management through fasting. Through fasting. Fasting produces self-discipline that is required to get to our God-ordained destiny and purpose. Fasting only works when the motive is right and the audience is our Father in heaven. Fasting will only work when the motive is right. And the audience is our Father in heaven. Fasting cannot um, twist God. And I want us to, to, to discuss about this misconception. Fasting will never um, twist God. We've seen people fasting even for 39 days trying to um, twist God and, 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 and they die. Yeah. You cannot untwist God by fasting. It can only quicken his will. It can only quicken his will upon our lives. It is important to know that reading, understanding, and through revelation is key. Is key for us to quicken God's will upon our lives through fasting. How do I know this? I know this from the story of Daniel and even Esther. From the story of Daniel chapter 10, verses 1 to 3. The Bible says that in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, according to the books, Daniel had read that when Cyrus will come to power, they will be released out of Babylon. But now it had, it had gone to the third year. Two years have gone and passed. So Daniel had the understanding of the word of God. He had a revelation in the word of God. He was reading the word of God. And so the Bible comes to tell us a story that in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel. That revelation was revealed to Daniel when he was reading the word of God. Whose time was called, whose name was called Belteshazzar? This was the name of Daniel. The message was true, but the appointed time was long. So he had the message, but he had the revelation that the appointed time had passed. So Daniel knew that the will of God upon our lives, upon Israelites, was that they are supposed to be released two years back. So this forced him into a fast for 21 days. And we see, we all know how the story went. God sent an angel who was captured by the prince of Persia. And then he sent another archangel to come and help him to send, to quicken his will upon their lives. Brothers and sisters, let us embrace the culture of fasting. Even for us servants of God, we lose our purpose, we lose our destiny when we lose this culture of fasting. Prayer, fasting, time management, communicating to God. Let us embrace this training that God is taking us. Self-management, time management.
financial management. It has been a pleasure to come to you. It has been a pleasure to speak to your lives. You can leave a comment on the comment segment of this video. If you need a prayer item, leave it down there. We are going to pray for you. And I would like to hold special prayers for anyone who wants all this, but they have not given their lives to Christ. I would like us to have a short prayer, and I promise you that after this prayer, you will become a child of God. You will belong to the kingdom of God. If you have not given your life to Christ, say this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I have heard your word. And I have believed in my heart and I'm confessing right now that you died and rose up for my sake. And you are now seated at the right hand of our Father in heaven. I pray that you forgive me my trespasses, remove my name from the book of death and write my name on the book of life. Fill me with the with, with the Holy Spirit, that he will help me to walk in ways that will please you. May you protect me, guide me, that I will always, I will always walk with you. I'm praying this short prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May God bless you. May God be with you. If you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, please do not leave before you subscribe to this YouTube channel. God bless you and I love you with the love of